I am unashamed. What about you? Bobo. <clears throat> Bobo's come up for a visit to unashamed. Yeah. I think there's a... Okay, thank you. All right, well... I've still got a cop. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I what guess I maybe asking. I was inspired by Phil's... You know, when he told us about his dream. I woke up because a lot of people had interacted with me over our discussion on the outlaw Josie Wells because I would not hire a guy for the simple fact in the duck call room that I would say 25% of the conversation in the duck call room <laughs> on a yearly level discusses the movie Out- Outlaw Josie Wells. So there was a guy that I said, all right, he wanted a job. I said, go home, watch Outlaw Josie Wells. We'll come back tomorrow, see where we're at. He came back. I said, okay, how was the movie? And he said, well, I didn't watch it. I said, well, you're fired. <laughs> he said, you we, may go now. You didn't even <laughs> he, hire me. He got fired before he got hired. <laughs> That's right. yeah, you I may said, go now, which is a tombstone line. You had one job. <laughs> that was the test. <laughs> because And it was a very enjoyable test because he didn't know what he missed. He didn't know what he missed. So the greatest like, western you you of can't all time. work here. I mean, the greatest <laughs> western of all time. The all love Josie Wales. So. I feel good about that. Well, there you go. Yeah, I've I've, ne- I've never seen it. <laughs> see, I've, I've, I've heard about it. We were just talking about this last night, and I said I need to see it because you guys talk about it all the time. You've never seen that. I've never seen it. <laughs> you're you're okay. Uh, okay, you may go now. Let, let's introduce. <laughs> you're not going to be on our podcast, Zach. <laughs> if you've never watched, this is Zach that. Dasher, formerly my cousin. <laughs> He's now entering a probationary period of whether he can remain a cousin in this first well, I, cousin. I've always wondered what was wrong with you because all of us have quirks. <laughs> well, y'all got our issues. How did you go this far and miss that? You haven't heard us talk about it? Yeah, I have. I just, I mean, you guys have referenced it like a thousand times. And I was, I mean, last night I'm having this conversation with Gary and I said, I got to see that movie because they talk about it, all, all these quotes, and I just haven't seen Disturbing. it. <laughs> Hey, so, Gary's seen it? Oh, he's seen it, yeah. See? I'm I mean, sorry I got sidetracked here, but I'm, <laughs> I'm in shock. Because <laughs> I thought all of our family members were at least on board with that. I'll get so, on board. So we've talked a lot about Jan, Dad's youngest sister, uh, that passed away last year. So Zach is Jan's son. So our audience is familiar with Jan because we talk about her a lot. So she's the one that basically is the reason why you became a Christian, because she wouldn't give up and basically yeah. got, got you to the right people. And so. by the way, she... She led many more people to the Lord also. I mean, she she got it. Oh, yeah. And we'll see her again. Yep. So I woke up, and this just came to me, and I wanted to share this with you. Y'all have no idea what I'm going to go over. <laughs> yeah, I, I told Al. By like, the way, podcast audience, <laughs> th- this is the way it goes. Like, we're fixing to hear this for the first time, so you're, we're reacting with I'm you. Taking I don't a momentary <laughs> pause from our normal scheduled broadcasting. <laughs> there are no notes for this one, boys. <laughs> because I woke up, and I thought, man, all these people are sending me these messages saying, Thank you for introducing the outlaw Josie Wells, and so I. Thought, so I'm not alone. Yeah, there were other people, yeah. but I th- I assumed they were youngsters. I didn't think somebody in my own family of your age <laughs> okay. was dumb enough to miss this. <laughs> I mean, whenever we feel strongly about something, okay, I get it that you probably shouldn't listen to us unless we have a duck call in our hand or the Bible. And by the way, the movie's like 35 years old, so. Who's counting now? Yeah. So what I did is I, I woke up this morning, this morning, without there's no prep to this. And I thought, okay, I did it took me the normal five minutes to realize I was still alive. Where am I? Yeah, because you, you you don't really just snap to. I know. I think it's a problem that's gonna cause some issues. Because I mean we had, we had, <laughs> I wouldn't I have, know that except when we were on vacation together. I get to kind of see how everybody Willie wakes up I, like a like a bear coming out of a den. With hair everywhere, and Jace is wow. like just spaced out. And he's a yeah. man that's never been drunk, right? So never been. And yet drunk. he's already told us before well, he's in he a fog. Back, but yeah. back yeah. in, but like me, I, I I woke up, but I knew what was causing my <laughs> well, where am I? I will I inter- that. I will interject that <laughs> here's he, a non non alcohol man. From okay, basically. no well, drugs. I'm having withdrawals from being high on Jesus because uh, yeah. I did share Jesus. <laughs> All day yesterday and night. That's we'll save that story for later because it's a long one. But it was good. 
So I introduced Jesus to some some hellions who needed it. I was once again cornered, and when cornered, <laughs> you come out firing. If you corner me dropping f bombs, I, I have one method. I am really fixing to make you think about those three questions: How you got on the earth? What are you doing here? And how are you leaving? Hmm. So let me introduce a five-letter word to you. You're giving me a four. I'm giving you a five. Mm-hmm. They were kind of young punks, you know. So, right. I, and and trust me, at the end of the conversation, the momentum had turned. There were no more f bombs being dropped. That's a story for a different time. So <laughs> I want to hear those. I came up with nine Western awards for nine. our audience. And was this? Did you dream this? Because you said something heard about a dream. I just. Figured that since it came to me after the dream, I woke up. I don't uh, remember my dreams, yeah. but do you ever quote Thomas Jefferson in your dream? No. <laughs> Phil kind of inspired me on that because I was like, I'm gonna try to remember what I dreamed tonight, but couldn't do it. I mean, I that was very I dreamed specific. about things where I'm walking with Thomas Jefferson. So <laughs> you know what? Well, I'm you wearing? do kind of have a Mount okay. Rushmore face. Hey. I mean, you already see Dad's new book cover. Uh, you know, a, a Dad yeah. looks like he could go he on, does. right? Really so does. I want to give the this is you won't read this in a book. There's no these are the Jace. Me, Western Awards. Western Awards. Number one. Number one. The best Western with the most one-liners. Tombstone. Yep, I can't I agree. That. I have seen. You have to. I was going to say, if you hadn't seen Tombstone, you, you're Jesus. out of here. I'm telling. You, I was shutting this down. <laughs> no, I've thing, got, so. and I've got a lot of it memorized. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I've got all the lines. I know. Let's have a spelling contest. <laughs> I have used it's always myself. Yeah. <laughs> Poor soul, he's just too high strong. <laughs> you know what's Another funny classic. to me is when I look over at my wife, you know, I'm kind of getting in the mood, I'm feeling oh, the vibe, boy. and I said, well, darling, are you wearing a bustle? <laughs> she just stone face. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> She's right. Did she ever watch What's the old guy's stuff? name? That no. Played Doc uh, Holliday? Oh, that was Val, Val Kilmer. Val, Val Kilmer. He, he, he should have won an Academy Award. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, it, it was a. It burns it was a me up. When movies like that and, and when acting performances like that mm-hmm. go unnoticed. Yeah. That's why I have the Jace Awards. Okay. <laughs> Number two, the best music. You want to guess? In an old Western. Best music in an old Western. So y'all are not in tune. Because it, it's obvious. The good, bad, and the ugly. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I heard... Choo, 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 choo. And then at the end, think of how many commercials when they have the standoff. They use that. You, they use that. I mean, I think it's from Spain, France, somewhere, that yeah. music. we Somebody actually took Italy. our duck footage. Maybe it was Italian. Yeah. And made a like a highlight duck footage to that music. <laughs> was it awesome? Did so, it make it better? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. And I also added a, a little note. They also, I thought, had the best close ups. They like introduce the close up to the old western. You know, as as in you know, you just you're looking into their eyes and. Well, that was the old. Uh, what's his Sergio? Leone, wasn't he the yeah, director? Yeah, yeah. I like the Good. soundtrack on uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. Yeah, well, I thought about that That's when you mentioned That's a different category. Uh-oh, I'm getting to that movie. That, that, okay, that well, did make the top nine. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the so, same yeah. director, right? Did he direct uh, the no, Eastwood I don't think movie? so. Oh, it's a different all right, one. Not yeah, all of these are completely positive, but this is, I don't know. I just, like I said, I woke up and I wrote these down. <laughs> the best Western you only watch once, Dances with Wolves. Hmm. Too long, yeah. It seemed like I lost a third of my life there. <laughs> I love the movie. It was really good. And you need to watch it. Yeah. But I'm like, I've never gone back. Yeah. Because I thought, yeah. man, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm dying here. But what's, what's funny, though, Jace, is that it's probably not any longer than The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, because that's a long movie. But somehow the way they wrapped it up, it just didn't. It, I think it's it, Kevin it Costner. Like well, well, I think it's, it's Kevin Costner. Maybe, maybe it's more of a drama. Much. It's not as much fighting. Action. Right. More like- I view Kevin Costner like Cy. He's he's great in small doses. Yeah. But the longer it goes on, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Although he did make the list for another movie. All right. The which is the next one? The best realistic gunfight in a western. Open range. You are correct, sir. Ah. Very impressive. <clears throat> now, open range. It After was- you wake up. About midway through the movie. I love the movie, but 
It starts snooze a little slow. fest first half. It's a little bit slow. And then all of a sudden, because in all these Westerns, they miss something. Because I always put myself in these Westerns. What would I do? I'm not going up there having a conversation before we have a duel. <laughs> when we walk out there, boom, which is what happened in that movie. Yeah, which is That's the greatest ex- the greatest duel ever. <laughs> when he just walked yeah. up and he was I'm, like, you the one that hit, yeah. hit, beat up my friend? Boom. Yeah. I've got yeah, it. Yeah, I enjoyed doing it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, no, I was, yeah, and I enjoyed it too. <laughs> Boom. He gone. <laughs> so, but then, so then they started backing up because that's how it go. And, well, pe- sure. and there were people missing because you're knew, nervous. He knew that was the one guy he, he had to deal with everybody else, just a bunch of ranch hands. You Having know? shot yeah. many firearms, what they did with that, whoever was the head of the audio, that that's what that's what those rifles, you know, the old Henry rifles, whatever they right. were shooting there. Yeah, but 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 that's the kind of sound. Plus, they it was they most, had that sound the sound of the weapons. That's what they'd sound. And they most had. shots were missed, which would be realistic. Yep. Didn't and, hit the target. I mean, you know, right. you, Look, and the old boy about, you know, that was behind the, the he, he, Yeah, he, they had the, and I don't know how they did that. <laughs> it looked but, amazing. But, you know, if you shoot something at close range, of course, this is a movie. I mean, so we're not being morbid. But, I mean, if you shoot something at close range, it's going the other way. And they, they somebody had thought about that. Yeah. And, Plus, uh, it, but that movie also had one of my all-time favorite lines. When the old guy says the the old Irish guy, he's like, "You shot me," and he says, "And for what? Yeah. More cows?" Yeah, I mean yeah. that's Bunch like cows. <laughs> yeah, that line. Well, the so other awesome. line that it had some good lines in it. When it he really when did. he asked him, you know, right before they went into the battle, he said, "I I want to know your name," you know. And I mean, of all things, he thought he's fixing to say. I like the old guy. Said, "Oh, what are these?" He said, "I tell you what, these Cuban cigars got me all riled <laughs> he, he, he said, "You got He said, "Old timer, did you get hurt in the gunfight?" He said, "No, I fell off a stool. These these Cuban cigars got me all hopped up, you know." <laughs> yeah, because they all got their cigars. Get them going. All right, that was good. Uh, best sound effects. They call me Trinity, and that whole series of movies. <laughs> And those were comedy westerns, but the reason I put best sound effects, there's just something about, if you haven't seen those movies. It's been a few years since. When he, you know, the opening scene, I'm not sure it was They Call Me Trinity or one of those movies. When he there's takes like three that, of them, right? Oh, there's more than that. Oh, really? There's like 10. <clears throat> I've seen them all. That's why I get them all mixed up. When he took that black iron skillet, plate of beans, and that wasn't like some kind of edited. He ate that entire Pan, that's something insane. Of beans, I thought that dude is a bomb. <laughs> he, he, he <laughs> you know what I mean? Later, you, have y'all not seen that movie? Well, it's been I years. Seen it. It's been. Yeah. Oh, and the look, Trinity series is good. Oh, look, Phil, like, the guy goes to draw. A pit. This guy's like, he like introduced kung fu before kung fu was cool in this, the western. This is before scene. he ate all the beans, or after? <laughs> after he ate the beans, yeah. he he uh, like somebody go to. Grab his pistol and he'd slap them. You know, he, <laughs> these he were, had these little, <laughs> you know, they they get pop. He these, grab these his were, gun and these he, were spaghetti westerns. They were yeah. made in the same time Eastwood was doing his thing. They're but, comedies, but it was a it was, it was at the time I guess a no name guy. I don't even remember the actor, but he was in all of them. But oh, he they're was really awesome. good. The people listening to that this, the blonde headed dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah had do yourself a favor oh, and yeah. watch those because you will laugh. But the sound effects is what makes it because it ain't just. He'll pop them, but he'll... Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing just thinking about it right now. <laughs> Missy will come in there. I'm on the floor. She's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm watching this movie. And she's like, that thing's 50 years old. I was like, and it's still funny <laughs> right now. <laughs> I was like, make me a pan Makes of beans. want to go back and I was watch like, it. make me a pan of beans, woman, because that's how you talk back there. And she's like, excuse me? <laughs> ah, you got to see the movie. All right, the most underrated Western. You want to take a shot at it? Most underrated. This is Phil inspired. Phil put me on to this one. Valdez is coming. Oh, that's a good one. That is the best movie you've never heard of. Yeah. It actually stars Charlton Heston. Yeah, Charlton Heston. Not Charlton Heston. That's not who it is? No. no, Who's that guy? No, uh... Oh, crud, I'm I, I can't remember his name, but I mean he 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 played a lot of good roles. Yeah, this but is that why one. you have a black box. 
Wow. Is somebody on that? Well. It's not that. Al, will you look that up? That it's going to take way star. more than that to get me get one of them, them in my hand. I'll tell you that right Maybe now. Maybe it's – is it your Brenner? No. 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 Nope. Al, that, 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 he looks not – he does look like Charlton Heston if it's not. All right, do you want to take a break before I give the next one? Do I? You want to take our break before I give yeah, the next one? You'll find out that oh, actor now. Yeah, you got do. me. Yeah, you got me. I want to find out. All right, well, hang on. Let's take a break, then we'll go. So, uh, you know, we found out, Dad, that you're not a big cell phone guy, of course, but <laughs> cell phones have actually uh, played a pretty pivotal I'm role. A, I'm not a any cell phone. That was the understatement of the year. <laughs> I was just trying to make a casual comment I'll about that and cell phones. Be brutally yeah. blunt. <laughs> I'll avoid them like cotton mouths. But everybody yeah. else, uh, this is kind of how they've been able to communicate during the coronavirus because a lot of times well, yeah. people can't get face-to-face. So they've been important sort of in the Zooms and Jason does oh, the yeah. Zoom stuff. Um, so anyway, we got a company here, Patriot Mobile, uh, that is a, a cell phone company. And what we like about them is that they kind of have the same belief system that we do. Uh, basically, you know, they don't like Planned Parenthood and leftist people uh, and causes. And so they make sure that uh, that they're supportive of some of the same people that we like. So we'd love for you to give these guys a try. Uh, switching is easy. You keep your own phone number. Uh, you can bring your phone or buy a new one. Uh, so right now uh, they've got an offer, uh, patriotmobile.com slash Phil. You can get a customized family plan. It's just 25 bucks, which is pretty cheap. So it's patriotmobile.com slash Phil, or you can give them a call at 972-PATRIOT. That's 972-PATRIOT or patriotmobile.com slash Phil, 25 bucks. Give them a shot. So shout. a cell phone without filth. There you go. Okay. Who I, was it? I remember now. Bert Lancaster. Yes. Okay. Bert Lancaster. I said Charlton Heston. I was close. Yeah. No. And Charlton Heston. Bert Lancaster. That's could, what I could meant. Could not step in the Bert Lancaster's shoes. I, I, I knew who the guy <laughs> was. Minute, I've, I've seen Moses. this movie a hundred times, it but I don't know one. why I thought Charlton Heston. Uh, <laughs> it actually changed my view where if somebody does something for me as a favor, I always, or, you know, like, you know, yeah, somebody do a favor and they have a certain set of skills and they're like, oh, no charge. I mean, the ending I, was great. I, it was. I offer $200 because of that movie. So I, I'm not, I don't want to go into it because I don't want to ruin, ruin the movie, but 200 bucks. It, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's been a few years. <laughs> so have you the, ever seen Valdez's I coming? I haven't seen that one either. All right. So I've got so a list. Save this list, list. You're just so we can so see the shallow no, of a person. Look, your maturity <laughs> level has fallen to new. I was always wondering what your problem is. Now I know you haven't watched enough good I westerns. I mean, I, yeah. this is this, this movie play, changed plays. my life. How I deal with people. They're like, "What's the charge?" I'm like, two hundred dollars." <laughs> people have said that many times. Yeah, he plays a, a Mexican, but it is really good. He did a good job. And I'm like, they said, "What is the two hundred dollars for?" I was like, "For the family, the kids." It's just a respect thing. It's a respect thing. Yeah. This guy, a crime was committed. I'm not ruining the movie for you because in the first 60 yeah. seconds, you realize a crime was committed. And Burt Lancaster said, I think we should give his family a little money because yeah. they, they give his, got the, give they, his wife. They got the wrong guy. They were after a guy and they got him. They went up there and they went, whoops, wrong guy. That's what the whole movie is about. He's like, well, what about this woman? And it's, a, it's actually a really good movie about overcoming prejudices because they looked at his wife and she was an old woman largely indian woman. Uh, big woman and they're like we're not helping her because they viewed her as nothing and he's like oh no we're helping her and the whole movie is about that he's like i think we should give her two hundred dollars so you watch that movie enjoy okay <laughs> i got <laughs> I know this is getting long it was 100 no but if he if he got a hundred the other person would match it yeah, so that's right. theoretically, that's right. it was two hundred. Yep. Even though he was only asking for a hundred, yep. the whole movie, he had somebody to match it because they were like, "Good luck getting a hundred dollars out of them." And they had thousands, but they wouldn't do it because they thought, I mean, the that they basically said, "It's a fat Indian. We're not going to help her." That was their thought, that's and he's right. like, "But you." You killed her husband. I mean, that's what the movie's about. So Enjoy. really, it's kind of a early version of social justice. That's it, it, reparation. It's, it's an awesome, <laughs> awesome movie. Times ten. All right, 
best payoff at the end, Western with the best payoff at the end, which Phil introduced earlier, once uh, upon a time, time in the West. The West. Yeah. Because you basically are wondering. Yeah, what's what the motivation? You, the whole movie, it's like five hours long. And you're wondering, <laughs> it is long. what does it mean? <laughs> What when I first watched it, I was like, "This is the worst movie." What do you? What does it mean? Charles Bronson was in it. The, the first scene's really good. Henry when, Fonda and Charles Bronson. When he and said Jack Elam at the first, remember the yeah. playing with the fly yeah, and his gun. The, oh yeah, awesome. And, and, and that, I was like, thinking about that with the close ups because you know when. It, when he uh, looks, oh, Jack Elam had that one eye kind of going off. When he looks down at that gun barrel in that close-up, that's one of the best shots ever. And I won't ruin it for you, but he, Charles Brunson said, did you bring a horse for me? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, looks like we shy one horse. <laughs> and he said, you brought two too many. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. But then it takes a two hour break, and you're wondering what the heck just happened here. <laughs> I had to watch but it five at, times before I figured it all out. At the end, you're like, oh, yeah. Movie it's a great awesome. movie, but it, it is long. Okay. And then we're down to the last two. The best Western that I wish I was in category that's Jeremiah Johnson. I just wish I would have been in the movie. For real, not the movie. I just wish I would have been in that scene. Yep. Looking around, I'd like to know how I would have done. Yeah. And that's awesome. And then the Will last. gear was so good in that. Remember the old man that was on the Waltons? He was Grandpa good. Walton. Well, well, Phil uses that line once a week about, you know, what day is it? What month? Maybe spring. Nah. <laughs> he said, I don't know. You think April? He said, I don't think it's April. Said, I, so you couldn't use I that think, apologetic on him. I think mid March. They tell him about the rabbit. Yeah. Just oh, the yeah. whole scene with well, the. Well, you Jeremiah. know what was the interesting thing about it, Jace, was that movie, which is an awesome movie, inspired me to like look into Jeremiah Johnson. So when I started, because he's a real person, and uh, they used to call him, <clears throat> they call him Liver Eating Johnson. Because yeah. he would eat livers of people. I mean, there was a, like an Indian war with him and the Indians, the Blackfeet Indian. But I mean, it was it was really interesting because it was a I mean, crow, yeah, Black, crow, crow. That's right. That's Black right. The crow. You're right. Yeah. I'm thinking about uh, another. Got to get you Indian because it right. was a very good uh, look at indigenous Indians. I mean, they did it about right. Yeah, they did. Yeah, all that good. movie. I, I get lost in that movie. You know, it just I, I don't know because I've always I like when he got in that beaver hut you know well oh, yeah. I've, d I've done that because oh, yeah. you thought well why'd you do it i just wanted to see what it looked like in right. there you know of course you get in there and guess what there's live beavers right <laughs> yep that's bad right. idea get out as quick as possible so there's a really interesting portal for me to learn about that era and the louisiana purchase and lewis and clark and i mean there's some amazing stories oh. great historical story i mean some of these are kind of you know romanticized for for movies but that you yeah. talk about some characters and some the people that like went out across this thing at the beginning. I mean, that's like your era. Dad. You you could have fit into that group. Oh, you, yeah. you'd have been went right there yep. with them. I mean, oh, I've, I've always said that was born a hundred years. I've thought too about late. it many times. Oh, I know. Know. So the guy that Indian shot him in the leg, and they talked it over, and they said, "Well, they said we got to cut the thing off." True story. You know, peg leg, whatever he was, but he's one of them mountain men, and he said, "If y'all will stay with me through the spring." No, he made a little deal with them. He said, "If y'all leave me, I'll never make it." Yeah. He said, "This thing, y'all gonna have to cut this, cut this leg off about the knee here." He said, "It's it's gangrene done got it." And they said, "If y'all y'all just stay with me, cut it off, you know." And they put a stick in his mouth, you know, and gave him a pretty good little few shots of whiskey, <laughs> and took his leg off, Ooh. and he sat around to the early spring, the thaw, before they start moving. A few months there. And the true story is, and he he was whittling on a, a, a little tree that his leg would fit down in and trying to smooth it out, put some hides down in there where he could, you know. So he made like, him like a prosthetic, him a prosthetic they, leg. This is his version of, <clears throat> so when they said the rest of his life he lived to be old. Wow. But they said you could spot him because you'd have be would be a footprint in a in a hole. In a hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said, yep. I, I know who that old guy is. <laughs> yeah. Well, because it's an it under was fairly easy to track. Back, well, you know, know what I'm saying? Well, back it's underrated. You know, tracking today. Like when I go in the wood, I, I'm I'm noticing the tracks. 
you know. By the I, way, the backwater's been up for uh, since February, February, March, April, May, four months backwater, high water. And I've been watching, but one of the things I look for is how long it takes the deer to say, okay, let's, let's move back in. Yep. So I haven't seen a deer at all. Everything's by boat. Every place over there, it's all flooded. But yesterday, there was just muck, you know, where yep. the water was receding, a little current in the low spots. And I wanted to see if I could drive a four-wheeler through all of it over there without drowning it out instead of a boat. Yep. So we're hopping over to vehicles now, I'm hoping. So I started down through there with the eunuch, Dan the eunuch, <laughs> And deer literally were running in every direction. Now, that's the back. sign. The water's not coming they, they back. They were walking back. in the muck. The acorns that, that fell this winter, it was a great acorn crop. They're all washed up in heaps here, there, and under. You so know. there. You know, Some acorns don't float. Some of them do. But the ones that floated, they're just washed up. But they're all still fine. Oh, yeah. The, the meat is still there. Yeah. But that's what they were eating. How do they day. know? How do they know? Oh, what are you talking about? Damn, let's take a it's break. It's a blast to, to watch it all unfold, I tell you that. Let's take a break. So um, <clears throat> we're, we talk a lot about losing our hair. Um, although I, I, I'm probably the one with the thinnest hair, you know, cause we have, we have baldness in our family. Too much. You've spent too much time indoors. Yeah, that's probably true. Who's bald? Where'd the bald, on well, what side? Well, on, cause Paul was bald and then Harold was bald. Yeah. Huh? Um, so they both, they, Paul. yeah, he, would, he had a, no, he, he had wasn't a, like bald. Well, I mean, no. he had a big ball spot in the middle kind of like the one i'm starting you know what to get. i never noticed oh yeah yeah it was there i couldn't get past the fact that every time he washed his hair the iron, the water had so much <laughs> iron in it it would turn i mean bright yellow but it may have had something that to do with cigarette smell that's what i'm saying it may have something to do with that six packs <laughs> five packs of cigarettes yeah. thrown in there too i think it, it kept... was more the water i thought i'm drinking this what's it doing to my insides <laughs> yeah, it's, it's turn your hair yellow it's nicotine <laughs> that's what it was maybe well, anyway, so I don't know. Maybe this would have been something for our grandpa to go in with the cigarettes and, and iron in the water. Uh, we got a great product for those of you that are losing your hair, especially if you're young guys, because, um, you know, you want to try to hold on to it as long as you can. So it's it's called Keeps uh, to Keep Your Hair. And basically they have generic version of a couple of FDA-approved hair loss products. So you go to their website. You register, you have a, a consult, make sure that uh, everything is okay since it's something you have to take, uh, and then they ship it to you. So uh, it's keeps.com, keeps.com slash door, keeps.com slash door. Check them out uh, and hold on to your hair. And so the last one, which is where we started, overall Best Western is, of course, Outlaw Josie Wells that you've ruined by not seeing <laughs> because I thought I could speak for the family on that one. But when you think about why it's my favorite, it's filled with lines that we use. I always want to get up and get some of these big pistol fighters. <laughs> yes. He said, watch him, Abe. I've seen him do some things. I was going to bring that up. <laughs> Greatest one-time scene. Yeah. That's was fan. that yeah. Abe and Lige? Shut up, Lige. Yeah, you know, I mean, they were they had him hemmed up, and he's like, I bet he's got another. He pistol. put his gun. Shut down. up, Lige. And that old, right old what's his name? Bro. One of them said, "See, Lige, <laughs> you pull his teeth, he's harmless as a heel hound." Well, then he started getting cocky. That's yeah, right. and he's like, "Watch out! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, watch I, him!" I've heard he's meaner than a rattler and twice as. Fast with those pistols. <laughs> then he's like, bring Vinny on the horse. What I love about that is after, you know, his sidekick says, I got to go right here. And he's like, what goes he talking about? He's like, there's no gold. He's crazy. He's crazy. And, uh, baiting him. and he'd baiting look, him. you know, boom, boom. But what I like about that is. The look on the guy's face. Yeah. Well, the look when he spit <laughs> right between his eyes. But also you hear the horse run off yeah, in right. the background. Yeah. I mean, I, it's those details that I, old Vinny said, let's get the heck out of here. You know, yeah. I'm at it. But I think, too, when he, uh, you had the little salesman of the elixir right here, sir. You know, he was even going to take on the mighty outlaw Josie Wales. And to me, when he, the reason I like that movie, and Eastwood's always been good at this, at making it just 
He kinda, directed kinda, that. He directed that one. Yeah, yeah kind of graphic, but like real. You know, when he spits in his chest, which now they would never do that in a movie, <laughs> just for because they're like, oh, that's so, that's so gross. That might offend somebody. You know. Oh, I remember Dad like spitting on everything around here. Like once that movie came out, right. you were like, he spit on, on the dog. On the you dog. know, which people find <laughs> we out. Made a, that we made a five minute scene in one of our DVDs <laughs> on on just spitting. <laughs> that's right. Everybody yeah, would Because so much time in a duck blind. People, is yeah, I mean, yeah, but they you know, that out Chief in the Dan George played the the Indian, his sidekick, Lone Waddy. Yeah. And he was, Lone Waddy was my favorite character. I mean, as good as Eastwood was, Lone Waddy makes it for me. He I mean, really, like, he really every did. dialogue. Well, I was going to say that they had the lines, they had the characters, and then the storyline of overcoming. I mean, this all happened. All these people were victims of oppression. That That's he right. just picked up along the way and felt like they had nothing to lose. I mean, they were mad because, you know, that's just how it was back then. Mm -hmm. Just bad things happened. He took in the stray dog. They had the Indian squad. They had the long oh, body. Yeah. I mean, he just kind of had him a little troop. Some old woman running her mouth. Hey, hey, yeah. I mean, they did. Come on. He said, he, he said, well, you don't want to be coming with me because people, you know, people that hook up with me get killed he said i noticed that people you don't like get killed yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean it was like it was a it is yeah Zach. so now you, you're right i'll check it out oh, oh yeah yeah well thanks <laughs> <laughs> well that was uh that was a review so anyway, but here's one you left a out film review? So this is what happens well, when you I, make a list i only made nine because <laughs> I know usually we have to a be. top 10 and so what i was going to say to our 10. viewers I left one place. That's good. Because look, I I was asleep. I woke up and I jotted this down. I I made this list in less than three minutes. So I'm sure I left one out, and that spot's for you. All right. So, so based on the founding of America, if uh, any group of individuals that can't appreciate the the review he went through, if you don't like those kind of movies. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> you know what I'm based Zach, on our you know, There's, broad, there's Zach, painting with a broad A lot brush. of people would pay thousands of dollars for counseling to see where it all went wrong, and now you found it for free. Just one little podcast. I've seen the majority well, I, of those. So, <laughs> so, what is so, my, so I, my ad, when you think about what you would add to it, one that a category. So my ad would be, um, for the 10th one, is the greatest Western miniseries ever. Okay. Lonesome Dove. Lonesome, Lonesome Dove. 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 Okay. It has Good. to fit in there because Lonesome Good. Dove what, is What awesome. made that for me is when he said, I'll, you know, I'll bury you, whatever, and he hauled that body all around. I, I don't oh. know. That I thought, yep, that's something I would do. And then do. when he got to the I end. I gave my word. Because it, it made it think, when we give our word, if right. I tell you something, I don't care if you're dead or not. I'm going to do but it. But the way he said yep. it, too, because he had him hugged up there, his body, and they had salted him, and he'd taken him all the way to almost to Mexico to bury him. And he said, well... That'll that'll teach me, yep. you know. You give your word on something, you got to do it. He's like yeah. he's having this conversation with Gus. It was like the conversation. He was they had talking to himself. I'm the one that said it. I'm, I'm, that movie so it, did a good job of showing people's flaws and that everybody knows it. And you know what? It's kind of okay. That's just the way he is. You know they they yeah. really played their individual characters. Well, I just think for Robert Duvall, and he's and that's kind of the same character he played in Open Range. It was mm -hmm. a similar character, but. He was so good at it, and it was just so rich. And then the dialogue back and forth with him and Tommy Lee Jones is just – and they had several after where other actors played yeah. it, but it never was quite you the same. You know what scares me? Where are the ones coming along – that we replaced the Brunsons, yeah. the Deval, the ear. I don't know. I don't know, know that we'll ever the, get back to know. that era of Maybe greatness. this podcast will a spark That's a right. revolution because nobody's filming movies now because of coronavirus. So maybe we'll have one random person hear this and think, you know, maybe we could do a little better job. I mean, I'm telling you, the Westerns have just gone downhill. The closest yeah. I've yeah. come to them is that little wheeler I've got parked in the yard with just gun barrels sticking out the, on both sides of the thing, and I'm traveling around in the modern world, 2020, 
and but I do have the wheeler, and I am heavily armed. It's like a covered it's, wagon. It's Western light. Yeah. Meaning, don't stop that wheeler and try to hurt the guy that's driving. Yeah. It's a gunfight. And you do some tracking and. You know, yeah, so you did. You're, you're out in the wilderness. The in the yep. wilderness. But the last good Western was, was Tombstone. There really hasn't been anything since yeah, then. Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple that were okay. And look, that one I thought could have been better. That's why I just gave it the best one-liners. You know, I, mean, I, I thought it could have been better. But their lines in Val Kimmer pretty much. Yeah, made the movie. Made the movie. Yeah. <clears throat> What's interesting is they did a another movie. You know how it is with movies? It's funny because – I don't know if they know it or it just happens by chance or what, but so there was another movie about Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday that was made at the same time and released the same year. Mm-hmm. And in yeah. that movie, it's uh, Kevin Costner it? is Wyatt yeah. Earp, but that's the, it was called Wyatt Earp. Just thought and it then was I weak. can't remember yeah. uh, one of the Quaid's, uh, uh, Dennis Quaid played yeah. Doc Holliday. Yeah. Well, and I watched it. It's a good movie. It is, but, but, but when it, you compare comparing it, it, right? It, it just it, yeah. it was the big loser, you know. So how many times you see a, like a biopic and they'll have two of them the same time? Yeah. Which I don't know if it's a race. And it was to it probably or... more realistic of a movie, but you know they're trying to make it more real. But you know, some of the like the good, bad, and the ugly, I, it didn't seem that much realistic as it just was. Just every detail of the entire movie was just awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's like now this is a movie. I don't. I'd, I'd love to know how long it took them to film that. Oh, it had to be a while. It was quite the tale. Yeah. Uh, let's take another break. So, uh, as we all get a little bit older, inflammation becomes a problem. Was that true, Jace? Yeah. Have you noticed it more as you yeah. as you turn that big five zero? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad, you have children now that are fifty. And yeah, I know it. But in in around here, everyone was raised. We're in an environment where all you have to do to excel and to be accepted is to be able to hit what you're shooting at. <laughs> That's yeah. a big thing around here. No, I think thing. he means like when I'm running through the woods, I still run at 50. But before when a vine would impede my progress, I just went on. <laughs> yeah. At 50 – when it says, wait a minute, I'll wait a minute. Because yeah. the next day, there's going to be some we call inflammation. Them, we call them wait a minute vines. Yeah. <laughs> you got well, so, look. So, they, man, so, they will ensnare a man. So I don't know, there. Jay. So we hadn't gotten you there yet, but Dad and I have been taking the product that uh, has that re- stuff has I, really helped. I hope it's coming from muscles in the. In the <laughs> oh, well, it is. It the is. They should of, put on the back somewhere, in my opinion. I know this is a small demographic for their target audience, but because I, I would find it helpful after frog hunts. It'd be great after the, you know, the day after yeah. the frog hunt. Because yeah. frog hunting is. This is good when you still go up and down in a boat and you're walking from one end of the boat to the other and you're going through the wait a minute vines. And your yeah. legs begin to ache when you get in your seventies a little bit, but this this I uh, think the audience you muscles, guys are talking about is about twenty people. So I took these muscles gonna... and I thought, boy, <laughs> the, I don't know what what I'm, what's in a muscle, but that but maybe it makes it's sense, the science of it, right? A muscle yeah. spends time being a muscle. So yeah. anyway, Omega XL uh, is what it's called. Great thirty years of research. It's a great product. I've been taking it about a month. Dad's been on it a couple of weeks. We can already tell the difference. Yeah, promotes a healthy immune and it helps with inflammation, which is great it's so, the only peel i take that's right there you go that's i mean that's the something right there I mean, literally the only peel i take there you go is a muscle that's muscle. As, this is as good an endorsement as you're ever going to get so you order now you get uh, your first bottle that you buy but you get a second bottle free which is great so you go to omegaxl.com slash fill that's omegaxl.com slash fill or you can give them a call 800-844-4888 800-844-4888 Omega.com slash feel and feel better. So speaking of movies, uh, Zach is, um, Zach has had a, you ran for Congress. You've had a lot of stuff. Have You're only, were you 40? 42. 42. I've done some uh, things. So he's one of our, he's one of our younger cousins and we're all getting so old. You're like the Forrest Gump of our family. You, the, <laughs> you know, you the, show Forrest, the Forrest Gump? <laughs> Forrest Gump. Yeah. You'd like show up Have in Have you ever seen places. that movie? <laughs> no, he's way above Forrest. Yeah. I'm, 
Thank you, Phil. Yeah. No, I meant how he we was didn't mean in like history. Slow. <laughs> acumen is far beyond <laughs> Forrest Gump, Jace. I mean, come on. I know, he I, haven't, I he hasn't seen the outlaw Josie <laughs> Wells. That's dumb. That puts you in the <laughs> lower region. Well, He's uh, what He's he different. meant, what Jay's meant was it wasn't the, the character. It was yeah. the, that Forrest Gump showed up everywhere. That's like Zach. That's he, what I meant. He has yeah. a lot you're of like, experience. all of a sudden, it's like, you're, you know, you were at whatever. Well, think about Zach's career deals plus zach is a i call him the tumbleweed i mean he just rolls into one thing into the other so he first he was a cheerleader associate well what was that whole thing you, you, i know i wasn't a cheerleader i worked at a cheerleading camp worked at a cheerleading camp. okay there you go that's, that's the forest gump ping pong no, 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 no. okay I, I, ping pong is, cheerleader zach's particular skill set one of them along with uh uh with al they get together and i call them they're, they're like clinchers, meaning when I say some things that, that, that just should not be said, they're the ones who <laughs> clean, clean it up. Well, the fact that you've acknowledged I mean, that for the first time that's, in your life, progress. it's, it's progress. Because I'm like, I, for years, I've been the family member that was deemed to confront <laughs> Phil when he said something like in his speech. And I'm like, that's a bad illustration. And they're like, well, go tell him. <laughs> so I've had to go in there and say, Phil, you know, your heart's right. Zach's your point's the right. one that heads up the – soften that son. Take, yeah. Soften that a little bit. Well, you did a – you just did a rant on In the Woods, In the Quarantine with Phil. I didn't think it was going to be a rant, but but the old, you know, the M- Mark Levin-type rant just came forth. And so I, Mark will probably tell you, he said, look, sometimes I just get a little wound so up. So I, I watched the edit. I got a little wound I watched up the final version of it, and I thought, yeah, that was pretty strong. So Dad tells me today, Zach, he's like, he said, yeah, they cut a lot of, they softened that quite a bit. And I said, whoo, because the finished version, <laughs> well, I thought was pretty, whoo, pretty stout. I said, so there was, it was strong. He said, oh, it was more. I said, well, thank goodness for Zach. I've That's always why. thought when you <laughs> move out to the woods and you don't really interact with people and you don't have access to any when kind you hadn't of, been to town in three months. Yeah, and you don't have like you know normal social interaction you just you turn into pretty much a that's where the john the baptist that you know he hung out in the wilderness <laughs> ate bugs and ran in and raved <laughs> so there you go so zizak was uh so you went from that you were uh you worked for a big pharmaceutical company which yeah you made a lot of money you were good at that i'm sure uh but it's just the different things you've done i, I find amazing plus you're like really into apologetics and on the biblical side um so i've always marveled but then zach decided he wanted to run for congress was that in 14 yeah 2014 yeah, yeah. and then because you were young so that was, I was six years ago how were you i was in my 30s 36 so the problem was zach was of course he was running here and you know he was super smart and obviously he's conservative but like like thinking man concerned like you know think tank conservative That's and right. around here it just you know they're just like oh you know, who is this guy and so they tend to just kind of go for the guy and you actually almost won yeah you without you, like, ever having done it thousand, less than a thousand votes that but Zach, I'll tell you right now close. i know i'm your uncle and you you've been around me your, your whole life and your mother is what's my sister she's on the other side now but i sincerely have a phobia maybe or something having to do with towns i, I don't like towns <laughs> you do i i just really will don't. you help him <laughs> well i'm just saying help, he's I, asking for help a lot of people say well you know how, how often you go to town yeah. i said well we meet with the brothers <laughs> one time a week but all other ways to try to get me to to a town yeah. I'm like I don't so, want I don't want to go I don't want to go there I don't know why I don't like towns. <laughs> He's the anti-town. He's so anti-town. so Zach, tell the tell the uh, there's people are tightly packed. It's it's it's, it's like, Jeremiah uh, Johnson. It's Jeremiah Phil, Johnson. he said well, I've been to a town. I'm just saying, and, and I want to go back, and, and all of the, the the traffic and the and the signs and the red lights yeah. and it's just well. So when I, I like when it. I go to like New York City, I feel that. Because I all of a sudden, oh, I'm when, when, Dad, when, when I was New York, there, I mean, it was just like I my was. My initial a, response is it was to torture, run, but was, I don't know where so to. So I run. saw Dad. We were in New it York. Was, it was torture for doing some media or something. And so we were flying out of New Jersey. So we went across that bridge and got out of concrete, and there was actually like a marshy. You know, Jersey kind of has some marshy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sloppy. When I saw Dad, just so. 
I mean, like yeah. I saw him physically, yeah. like because he saw water and grass. I mean, that's how tense you were the whole time. And I'm thinking, I know good and well. There's more people. I'm not the only one that just has has this aversion to town or town life. Everybody stacked on top of one another, and just and they the buildings are going straight up. Thomas Jefferson speaking of him. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> was this a dream? He said, we would get he said I episode. predict future happiness for Americans <laughs> as long as there's open lands to go to. He said, however, if we ever get stacked on top of one another, like in Europe where we just left. Right. Because he was looking at this wilderness thinking, you know, as long as they can keep moving, he thought it was far bigger than it actually was. Oh, yeah. Because you can imagine – you first get here, you look around, you say, man. So he was just saying, if we ever get stacked on top of one another, we'll become as corrupt as they are. I think he was right. I've never forgotten that because I thought, you know what, that old guy, he had a head on him for sure, but he had it He had it figured out. He did. So let's uh, just, take a break. Don't stop and pile up on top of one another. It won't be good. <laughs> well, take, what do y'all think? Let's take a break. And, uh, Zach, I want you to tell the story uh campaign story I want you to tell so remember the when you and dad did Hannity yeah. the remote oh yeah I remember <laughs> <laughs> tell the audience what happened so you're running for Congress yeah. and of course we're obviously supporting our cousin and so I don't remember that yeah well tell, tell the story tell what happened uh, so I came down here we got a we're doing a Hannity hit but it's it's got the satellite truck down and and I was nervous about it. Not, I mean, because I'd never been on TV before. Uh, well, I think it may, may, may have been on once, but um, especially national. Yeah, people. national TV. I'm like, I've never. You know, I'm, you know, I'm riding y'all's coattails on this thing, and uh, so, and I was even more nervous because I knew Phil was going to be on with me. I didn't know what he was going to say, so I was, and he had been <laughs> everywhere. Welcome to my world. <laughs> yeah. Well, everywhere <laughs> we had gone before that, Phil would introduce me. Like I'd have him speak at different uh, fundraiser events or whatever, and he would all always introduce me as. Um, <laughs> The the one who burst forth from his sister's loins. <laughs> yeah, I've heard him do that. <laughs> so, when, it's so just like, a way of describing how you got here. I know. That's how we uh, all get here. Only it, dad can turn that beside. phrase and make it work with you know? yeah. graphic, yeah. very detail. graphic detail. It's, I hadn't thought of that. Well, then you, but you were kind enough to ask me. You said, "Is there anything you want me to stay away from?" I'm, I'm like, "Yeah, I feel." You that. shouldn't have told him because that's <laughs> what I, 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 I know. know. That's how he's learned to be the yeah, clean. I, I've learned. I've learned over the yeah. years. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm effective now. Because because I say nope. <laughs> I said yeah. Just don't mention the sister's loins. Yeah. And I mean, it wasn't five <laughs> seconds into the interview, and and he's like, hey, I tell you what, Sean, this one right here, we betted him since he burst forth from my sister's <laughs> loins. This was the open, and I'm like, and of course, I'm just like, I forgot that. Yeah. And Sean's like, what? Is- <laughs> What kind of? That's probably why I didn't make it. Yeah, yeah that probably it was, was the that, difference maker. Was that was the loin, the, the loin book. See, that was one thing I had to tell Phil one time. I was like, because he would describe our sin, and yeah. but he always did it the same way, and he he would start off with just like you know typical sins, getting drunk and lying, and then all of a sudden he he ramps up intensity, and he's always rapists and murderers. <laughs> I'm like, look, just leave those two out just, just because probably. normal, the the middle America, they're not doing that, you know? So just leave that but out. It, but it's been effect. I mean, but your bluntness is very well, right. It is. So look, I told him that, and so he, he gets up at, we're, you know, at the event, because I just said, I'm going to tell him to quit doing that. Just yeah. Say all those other because people miss your point because it's so graphic. So he's like, he gets up behind the mic. He says, "Well, on the way over here, my son informed me <laughs> that I probably need to quit putting these two groups of people in the category of sinners, rapists, and murderers. But I'm here to tell you, they're sinners." I'm like. That was not my point. You missed the point. <laughs> so my moment was we were on our way. We're in the back of a limo or, or SUV. We're heading to Fox and Friends to do a, a, a season hit for Duck Dynasty. And so the first episode that year was the one where John Luke is in the boat with his little girlfriend. And so you're giving him all the dangers of dating. And so, grandfather advice. Grandfather advice. And so in there you had, you know, herpes, 
chlamydia. No, you didn't have chlamydia. You had the, these lists. Oh, wait. Yeah, his list was. He had a, a good list of sexually transmitted diseases. And so we're riding over to Fox and Friends, and I said, and we, we'd already seen the clip they were going to show. So I knew they were going to show it. And I said, Dad, you left chlamydia out of your list. And I'm just making it as a joke. And he was like, yeah, I wasn't sure how to pronounce that. I, 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 that was the reason I left it out. I said, oh, okay. So then we get on there. And so Ducey's first question, he said, well, Phil, you know, you, your, your grandkids are on here. I mean, you know, do, how was it like giving your message to these kids? You said, well, Ducey, chlamydia, herpes. <laughs> here we go. And then he just went, and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. You know, it, was, it was so funny. And I thought I was sitting on the thing, thought I gave him chlamydia. He but, didn't have that yeah. one to put in there but until the, I said I spoke at the <laughs> Republican National Convention, and I reminded him of what uh, – what those sexually transmitted diseases and how many? One hundred and ten. Oh, that was CPAC. Million. That was CPAC. CPAC. I'm not saying you it's not a problem. <laughs> they were all. They were all saying, "There's no way there's that many sexually transmitted." Uh, of course, I had read it from the CDC. I said, "Well, yeah. argue with well, the what's CDC." What's funny about it, Zach, is that Dad comes out. So he's receiving yeah. the Breitbart Award. Yeah, and he comes out with that. That Browning shirt, which is now in the, is going to go in a museum, Dad. By it's, the way. It is now in the Hall of Fame. It's going to be in the Louisiana, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. They got my shirt. I hate to see it go, but we were gone. glad to see it that go. That was a good idea, Al. Yeah. I mean, because that's like, I didn't I like kinda, that shirt. No. It's, and it was a Browning shirt, and they hadn't supported, I mean, sponsored us in years. So, so Dad walks out, and he's got that shirt on, and he's got the camo bandana. And, you know, everybody there is like all the presidential candidates. It was 2016. Yeah. And so he comes out and he just starts right in on the, you know, sexually 120 million. Say, and the audience is just like, whoa. I mean, like you could tell because like, they're used to the you yeah. know, plate platitudes and blah, blah, blah of all these politicians. And dad just comes out like with a meat cleaver. Whoa. <laughs> you know, they didn't know how to deal he with said, it. He said, uh, that's one out of three. <laughs> look to your right. Look to your left. <laughs> yeah. One of you has got <laughs> One of these probably got one. <laughs> I was just trying to get them to see that unless there's a change made in our culture, yeah, this is not. Look, this you is had not going to end. You, had, you like. have a shock and awe, Val. You know, because because you do get to Jesus, and it's like even I was explaining about because it makes people feel uncomfortable. I was like, well, Phil, there's some people who are you know dealing with these issues. You know, you're making them feel uncomfortable, but I know you're just doing it to. Get to Jesus, which it works, especially with people that have had really rough lives because they kind of like somebody getting up there and talking straight, you know. All so, I know so. for sure is I, I'm not the only rank heathen that, ha, that, that that's come out of a rank heathen background. Yeah. I think there are more than, than me. What do you all say? Yeah, there are. Well, and So you boys are in your 50s, are. which, and I'm not but 20 years ahead of you, 20, 25 years ahead of you. I'm not far ahead of you all. But I can tell by just listening to y'all that it, it, you're softening the blow. <laughs> well, I'm softening the blow because of First Peter three fifteen. You know, in your heart set apart, Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Oh, I'm fully prepared to to fulfill that verse. So. And do this with gentleness and respect. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next part. What I'm calling that part gets what you're calling and gentleness you and i are, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a little confused about gentleness yeah <laughs> i think i quoted well, yeah, there's there's different roles i mean there's guys that have more oh, more of a prophetic so, voice so that, Dad, i'm just saying that's in the bible i was yeah. a little nervous about trying to quote that because i didn't memorize that coming in here it though, but it? it does say but do this with gentleness that's and respect that i quoted that to phil before that was an ex-commercial fisherman talking but also the apostle paul is the one who said Look, because they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gives them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They fear with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity, their gossip, slanderers, That's God, not haters, the argument, hitler. but do this <laughs> with just gentleness the and respect. Romans 1. What do you think, Zach? Stop. Well, so look, we're not, we didn't quite be able to finish this debate. We got to look, the discussion is going to go a little more. For those of you on our uh, Blaze TV uh, that are subscribed, to our show we're going to continue this discussion for the rest of you guys and by the way if you want to sign up for that uh, blaze tv.com slash unashamed is how you find out about that uh, use jace or phil as your code uh, but we're going to continue a little more of this discussion since we got zach here with us and go watch your western and go watch a western
So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook. And be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.